All right, guys, we got another special podcast. It is number 111 with the man, the myth, Steve Daneman, who is a good friend of mine, long time, also happens to be my CPA. If you need a good CPA, he might be too busy, but I don't know. We'll let him know if, if he's taking clients at the moment. Steve, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, I only do one one poker player's taxes, and that's the man, Jeff Gross, and nobody else. Is that's that it. true? You only that's do it. one poker player's taxes? I did. I turn everyone else away. Wow. All right. Well, if you're watching and you don't have to be happen to be into poker and maybe you could do his taxes, he's great. I, I We're not going to talk about that specifically because I know I give you a lot of headaches. I, I feel like I'm organized, but I'm sure I'm in the, in the real you're world. You're getting better. Organized. You're getting better. 10 years into it, you're getting better. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I'll take that. I'll take that. So, all right, Steve, uh, this is uh, basically we want to go down memory lane. You know, I know you have a you have an illustrious career. You did something pretty special. Your first ever tournament, you happen to hit a multi-million dollar score, which is uh, nothing to sneeze at. We also have some connections, Baltimore. I lived there for a while. You're from Baltimore. You know, you, I, th- I believe you were born in Baltimore and you, you live in Maryland. So yeah. uh, we, we could hit on some of the Baltimore stuff as well. But let's just, let's just dive right into here and talk about uh, this 2005 you never, never had a tournament cash before. I don't know if you ever even played one tournament live before, which will let you cover what happened. Why, why did you decide in 2005 to to just dive into the main event? What was so? What, what well, it was. Uh, I started playing uh, with my. You know, you, you pretty much hang out with with you hang out with guys. You guys do the same thing. So we were always going to casinos and 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 losing and having fun. And then this poker thing started. One day, I I bought a chip set. Right. Uh, I, I went. I went to the uh, CVS and I bought poker chips, the red, white, and blue ones. And I brought these guys over. And a little bit, I know that the World Series I thought was a winner take all. Okay? okay. So I had this tournament in my house with these ten guys drinking beer, having fun, and uh, uh, we're playing with those, you know, plastic chips. And 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 I won, so it was winner take all. So I felt really guilty. So the next poker tournament I did, I, I had like first, second, and third. I won that one too. No lie. So uh, I started this little poker thing on Tuesday nights at my house, and it just really caught on with a bunch of guys. Within three weeks of like the phone, everybody wanted to come over. We, we limited to like twelve people, and um, so uh, that was like in '03. That was uh, yeah, that was in '03. And um, leading up to '05, I, I printed out the sheet and I was looking at it every Tuesday night for about three months when they had all the different. Uh, events on and so forth and we all went up to Atlantic City went to the Taj Mahal now I think it's closed now but uh, right. uh, and that was one of my first poker tournaments I played in the uh, in, in a casino the the second one was at the World Series which was the thousand dollar rebuy up and mm-hmm. up into the 2005 main event right and uh, so uh, I'm out there golfing about two weeks before the main event and I'm golfing my buddy Jerry and I said I said, going to Vegas next week. He said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm going to Vegas. He said, you, you playing in the World Series poker? I said, yeah. I said, you want some action? He's like, yeah, sure, I'll take some action. Why not? You know? Uh, and uh, so the guy we're playing with, and he says, are you kidding, Jerry? This guy's horrible. I mean, this guy's never even seen me play before, first of all. Okay. He's like, he says, that's like throwing five grand down. And we were drunk, right? So, man, the next day came, right? And I said, uh, I called Jerry up and said, hey, were, were you serious? Were you, you, you know? You gonna put the money up? He says, "Yeah, yeah, I'll put the money up." I said, "Okay, great." So a week forward, a week from there, right? Leaving on like a Friday, okay? Going to Vegas on Friday, leaving on a Friday. Here it is, like Wednesday. I ain't heard from you. I ain't getting no money, but I'm going. I don't care. I'm playing, buying in, and so forth. So uh, I call him up. I said, "Hey, I'm gonna have some people over the house. Get some crabs, some shrimp. Why don't you bring the, you know, the family over and stuff?" So uh, he comes over, right? And he takes and gives me the check, and he says. Peg, his wife, doesn't know. Don't tell her. I said, okay. Huh. The funny thing, fast forward, okay? Fast forward at the fourth day in. It's a seven-day tournament, right? And it's one behind the other. Not like this crap now where you're three months later or something. But uh, fourth day in, the newspaper's calling Jerry on the phone. He's like, hey, we hear this story. It's been in the Baltimore Sun since day two, right? Here we're on day four. The the, uh, the the media is at my parents' house. I'm like, hey, this guy, Steve, your son, he's on here. And they're calling Jerry up. So you're the partner and this and that. It's just so great. So then he's got to tell his wife. He's like, Peg, I got to tell you something. 
I gave Steve 5,000 to go into this tournament. Now, Peg is just a sweet soul. She doesn't care. She doesn't, she doesn't care in the world. She's just, you know. And she's like, oh, okay, Jerry. Okay. He says, the good news is, the good news is, we're in the money for 30,000 right now. So we're good. We're, we're, we're making a profit. Well, she says, well, well, that's good then, right? He says, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was funny. Fast forward to the seventh day and Jerry, Jerry comes out to the poker tournament, the final table. We're down to five. I think I just knocked out Andy Black. And I, I go up to his daughter and in, in, in the, uh, the crowd there. And I said, where's your dad at? She says, he was tired. He went to bed. No. No, no, here we are. You know, here we are. We're at now like two million bucks, right? Two million. We're at two million. Down to five. And and he's in, he went to bed. So finally, when we got heads up, she calls him and said, Dad, get down here. Steve's heads up. And I told Joe, I said, Joe, look, you're the better player. I'm tired. This thing is going to be done in five hands. And it lasted six. After the sixth hand, Jerry just finished. Jerry busts through the door and he looks over and he looks at me and he looks at the cards. He says, you're the worst, Steve. You're the worst. <laughs> no way. I mean, wait, so he, so you end up, but let me just ask you, I mean, that's an amazing story all around. So like what you got 4.2 million. So he literally won over $2 million, right? Yeah. Two, uh, two and an eighth, right? 2.125. So, uh, they, they, you know, they throw us in the, they throw us in the, uh, uh, limo cause we were at Binion's. Okay. Cause that's where it originated. But, yeah. We played the first five days at the, uh, the Rio, and then the last two was at Binion's. Okay. And uh, they put us in the and they took us down to the uh, to the to the to the cage, and they said, "How do you want it?" I looked at him, and the lady's like, "You know, it's normal and typical to give one percent." So one percent was like forty grand in tips, right? I looked at him, he looked at me, and I said, "I said, why don't we just give ten thousand each?" And uh, he says, "Yeah." And I said, "Let's take ten thousand dollars each for the table for the craps tables because we're gonna go play craps." <laughs> Here it is. We've been playing for 14 hours, right? So, uh, uh, and I said, let's let's get some money for all the guys. We'll give everybody 2,000 bucks. So I got my own private craps table, which is really cool. Right. So about a half hour in, Joe comes walking by. And later in the interview, he said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Steve just played 14 hours. And uh, he's sitting at the craps table playing craps with his bodies. I don't understand it. I had to go to bed. <laughs> So how did how did the craps go? Did you guys get any? We lost. We lost. It. We, we played an hour. We were so tired because I was. Oh God, we were up almost twenty four hours. You that's, know, it was crazy. That's amazing. So you so you hit the score. Your buddy gets half. I mean, that's it's honestly it's. So I had two buddies. I actually had two buddies that no one really knows about or no one really thinks about. First, I had Jerry. Okay. Jerry gets half two and a, two and a quarter. All right, two and an eighth. Right, and then my other butter buddy, you know it well, Uncle Sam. He gets the other half. Right. That's Everyone true. always forgets about the other partner. The that's, a, that is a, that's a big there with hand out, right? That's a big partner. So you end up you end up netting over a million dollars. About one, two, one, three. Pretty, pretty sweet. So how did this? You know, well, how did you can't quit your day job? You still got to go work. You know, you still got to work. So, but th were you tempted to go in to become a poker pro, or, 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 or never yeah, even? Yeah, First of all, you know, I, I told Norman Chad, I said, I'm like the uh, third best player at my home game. Fourth right? best, I think you said. Or fourth. The real truth of the matter is I was the worst. I was the worst. And you have to, and I, I always say in poker, I said, you got to look, look all the, so, first of all, when someone plays the lottery, someone's going to win. So was he really lucky? Well, it was just, someone's got to win. Someone's got to win the World Series. Nowadays, because you have a lot more chips, Luck is taken out of the equation a little bit more. Okay, back then you started with ten thousand in chips. Okay, so you didn't have a whole lot of room to maneuver and bluff people and, and, and things like that. So uh, you know, I realized, on oh, look, I'm a I'm a CPA financial advisor, and uh, I knew that I was lucky, and I'm going to take this money, and no one's getting it. I ain't giving it back. And I played a little bit of poker. I played in the the uh, the WPT championship where you blew like twenty five grand a couple times and I had a couple partners on that but uh, and I had fun for like next two three years and then I kind of hampered down and then uh, with my accounting practice I still play poker but you know when when I go to the casino you know, you'll you'll see a beer in my hand that's because I don't have to drive I don't drink when I'm at home I, I drink when I go to the casino and I have a fun time you know and 
I'm there and, and I'm acting crazy and, and just fun. It's just, it's like a vacation. When I go to the casino playing poker, it's just a vacation. I'm not there to be serious. I want to win, but I don't, I'm, I'm still there where, where fun is fun for me is, is in the, uh, in the realm of things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I've played poker with you. I know that you do, you have a good time. You, you really do take it lightly. You know, you have a, you're there, you're socializing, you have a good time. You have some good results and you don't play a ton. It does look like you got 12th in the, the WSOP main event, 10 K in, in, in France. You've got, oh, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That was uh, that's when Phil won his what his won it over there. I was uh, I tell you, it was like four hundred some people there, right? Yeah. I'm like, uh, hey, let's. Uh, I said, hey, let's go to let's go play uh, let's go play in Europe. It'd be really cool, you know. And uh, man, I tell you, playing at a table where there's no, you know, it was boring to be honest with you. But it was the thing that helped me was I got an iPad. So that was the first tournament that I had an iPad. And I'm sitting at the table and I'm just streaming on the iPad. Keep me because nobody else speak, spoke English at the table. Right. So it's pretty boring. Couldn't talk to anyone, you know? <laughs> yeah. But that was, that was a tough tournament. Those guys are good, man. That was the yeah. cream of the crop there, kid. It's the, it's, you know, you're playing some of those 10 Ks, the three K main events and pe po people have gotten better at poker to your point that it used to be a little more luck in the structures and just a lot less information. What, uh, what do you like in terms of studying? I mean, have you done any kind of brushing up on your game in the last two to five years? Or are you really because now you have twins? Congratulations. Thank you're married. You. I know you're kind of just, you know, you're just living life. Are you really putting any time into your poker game? Or if you play, you're just going to play and, and sort not of really just just want to play. And, and it's poker just takes, you know, in a tournament takes so long. I think they've kind of sped things up with the blinds and, and, and things like that. But um uh, I, I haven't really done much of poker. I mean, it, it's kind of like golf. You know, you can you can hit the ball 300 yards, but it's that short game that you can continually have to practice and be in the zone for. And you can't be in the zone playing, you know, four or five times a year or so. You know, you got to play online. You got to you know travel the circuit and things like that. And that's fun to a certain degree. But you know, I'm at the next stage. I got my girls, the twins. Uh, uh, they're six years old, and we we you know we. I, I, I changed the deck of cards for a deck of old made cards and fish now. So uh, I, um, I'm getting pretty good at that, but, but, but I'm a little behind on that. <laughs> for sure. And, and, and uh, is that, is that something where, you know, you, you have this big score, how, how did things change for you in that immediate, immediate time? So you, you said six year old, so around 2014. So you still nine years from that score until you have yeah. your twins. I, was there ever a point where you were pressing it or are you, like you said, you weren't giving up that money. You took a few shots, like would play a bit, but was there ever like immediate, did you ever really consider though? Like, Hey, I'm going to start playing a lot more poker or that never even. No, I, I, I knew my limitations pretty much. And the fact that back in 08 is when I started flipping houses, the, uh, the end of 08. Yeah. Um, so uh, I knew, I mean, I'm an accountant. I run the numbers. Uh, Hours put in the poker versus return versus hours put in the flipping. And I made a, a tremendous lot more than that um, uh, over the last 12 years or so. And uh, it was something that was, uh, you know, I, I think poker, I, I think people play poker. I play poker because it's really cool for social wise. You know, it's fun. You're sitting there. Everyone has the same. At the same time, you're still competing. Uh, and the fact that the more time you put in the poker, the better you will get, but it can't guarantee results. Unlike, say, flipping houses, you know, you buy right, you sell right, you do all the right things, you're going to succeed. Right. And that score, you know, when you go to settlement that day for that score and they wire that money and you made, you know, 50, 80, $150,000 on a house, it took five months. Man, every time, and I, I compared it like, Flipping a house, even a bad flip, was still like making final table money in a thousand dollar tournament. You know, so it's like every time I buy a house, I know I'm making the final table. It's just right. a matter: am I going to get fifth or second? Right, and that that's pretty. I mean, that is pretty sweet, and that's a that's a really good analogy. Uh, and and do you think uh, in your your experience in that first main event in Vegas when you got second, how lucky do you think you really got? Uh, obviously, you got lucky. Anyone to get there would, but was it? Were you, because I actually saw something that you said it was kind of boring, you know, to sit at a table, because this is a long tournament. 
especially your son is not professional to sit for seven days, long days. Oh yeah. And something it's gotta be exciting because it's new. It's different, but you know, it it is, it's not, you know, you're at the table a lot. What, uh, what, what did you do to kind of keep yourself? This is what happened. I I go out to Vegas. I've been to Vegas many times. I like going to Vegas. I go out to Vegas. I got my money. I got my spend money and I start hitting the tables and I start losing. So I end up losing about half the, I lose my money and half the buy-in, okay? So now I've got to figure out, man, am I going to continue with this, playing this 10 grand, the World Series, or am I just going to bag it and say, man, go home, right? So uh, I tell you, I am one of the luckiest guys in the world, okay? Yeah, First Top of all, number one, one, one. I mean, just everything just aligns. I'm, I'm a 14 handicap in golf and I have three hole-in-ones. I, that's crazy. Silverman doesn't have one hole in one, for example. Still doesn't right? have one. The first hole in one was a swish, 129 yards away. No in the way. Field. A swish? In a CPA tournament, a swish. It I broke. I've never even heard of that. How is that possible? It broke. Like, it, it, just, it, like it was at Mount Pleasant in Baltimore. Number wow. two, Rocky Point in Baltimore, 269 yards away, three iron, practicing on a tee because I've never been on that. And I, Number four, number four, uh, number, th- that's the second one. The third hole in one, I'm with Jerry. I hit the ball. I pull it. I'm like, I better hit a provisional. All right, we're in a tournament. I hit a provisional, boop, 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 in the hole. He turns to me. He says, what's he saying? You're such a dickhead. Was this before or after the? The, this the, is after the World Series. Okay. That, that one was after the World Series. That particular hole was a par four. That was 329 yards in West Virginia. Anyway, I told you I was the luckiest guy in the world. Let me tell you about the World Series and how lucky I got. Okay. It doesn't, it, it doesn't require a hand. It's not a hand. I'll tell you how lucky I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. Back then in 04, Harrington brought out his book, right? You know the Harrington book. You probably never read it. You were still in diapers. You're that young. I All right. Read. I know it's very good. All the guys read the book, right? The second volume is coming out, okay? Two, a day before I'm getting ready to leave, I go to the bookstore to pick up the volume. I go there. I go to the section of the books, and I look. It's not there. Volume one's there. Volume two isn't there. Volume one's blue. Volume two's red. Now, Jeff, I'm staring at the shelving where the books are. You got two options. You can go this way when you leave, or you can go this way, right? Red, red, pill, red pill, blue pill, yeah. Did I tell you I'm the luckiest guy you ever known? Yes. I went this way. Just as I'm leaving the aisle, this kid comes around with a stack of books up to here. And it was the Harrington book. So I grabbed two of them for me and my buddy. All right. Fast forward. We're in Vegas. I've lost my money. I got to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with my and, and get this money. So I'm like, all right. For three days, I sit by the pool and I read this uh, uh, Harrington's volume two book. Okay. And I start taking notes. And you remember, a lot of people remember, Steve, you had notes in the tournament. What was these notes? Okay. So three days, I'm I'm reading this book. I'm taking notes and stuff like that. And I said, Steve, I've got to totally change the way I play. And this is where the boring part comes up, okay? So before I left the house, what do I do in life? I'm an accountant, right? I count beans. I kind of figure out how many hands we're going to play. And I don't have a clue, but I'm trying to figure it out. And I figure if the very first day goes, I have three goals. First goal is to make it past the first day. Second goal is to get on TV. And third goal was the cash. Mm-hmm. So on the first day, uh, um, I, I kind of figure out if I don't play a single hand, how far can I go? Can I make it past the first day? And I can't. I can't. I can make it about three quarters away. So I said, you know what? I'll play the top 10 hands. And that's what I did throughout the tournament. So what, you get ace jack, ace jack off, you were full in. Done. Ace, if there's a raise in front of me and I look down at ace queen, fold. Because Harrington says, if an ace flops out, your queen is no good against the king kicker, right? Now, it's totally different the way we play now. That's the way I played, and I had my I know, that That line of thinking and playing like that could probably make you do pretty well, though, because it's going to avoid a lot of tricky spots. And, and it's not like it's just it's not like it's just no good. It's just there's some different thoughts and, and, and spots on it. But honestly, that's it's not a bad strategy. It's going to keep you out of a lot of harm and tough decisions. Back then, you know, poker has progressed so much now, you know, that you, you, you have to be a rocket scientist to know everything. You got to be a Bill Chen or a Jeff Gross, right? 
but the uh, or Phil. Um, but but so so uh, you know the lucky part was about the book, the book, and I read the book. I, I went almost broke. I, I got the book. I got some money. I hit the you know the ATM cards, and then uh, uh, and then I went down there and I, I practiced. And I, I there's a guy down, uh, but two doors down from my office, and he's a hypnotist. And uh, he, he said to me one day, he said, Steve, I didn't realize it was you. You played poker. I watched on TV. And we got to start talking about, um, you know, what I did. And I said, you know, every two hours on the break, I took and read these notes. I said, number one, what is it? I'm here to have fun. Number two, what is this? You know, number three. And at the bottom of the sheet, and I said it on TV with Joe Hatch. And when I had an H jacket, I fold it when we're down. Oh, only a small mistake. Exactly. So uh, uh, and he says, you know what you did, Steve, is you, you really kind of self-hypnotized yourself because every two hours you were reading these things. You had a and, mind. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and we know poker is such a mind game. Um, and, and, you know, hey, it was a great run. Was I lucky? Yes. Am I a one-hit wonder? Yes. But I never won either. So, you know, second. The funny thing is I, I – uh, uh, I had a friend of mine. She just came in, uh, runner-up in the Miss Veterans uh, uh, contest. She lives in the neighborhood here. And uh, when, when she got second place, I sent her a message. I said, uh, "No one ever remembers second place." But it was funny because I remember Joe uh, Hashem saying, "You know, he was in an interview and says, no one ever remembers second place, Dave." <laughs> so that was he, kind of funny. He was on. He was on the podcast uh, as well not long ago, but. You know he yeah great guy you know he he went he, is. he went played did did a lot of poker stuff uh afterward and you know it is kind of funny though because i think in reality and this is sort of what we're seeing now is people are more interested in uh, ambassadors uh people that are you know active with the game you're not really in the social media i don't believe you have a twitter and you don't do much stuff but i'd say you embody sort of what the world series is all about it's like the idea that someone can go there have a good time not be a super professional and have a big score. So, you know, I think you are one of the you know people that we see in the chat right now. People are, are saying they remember the run. I mean, you are you th th that note card, the way you were, the, your attitude, your cavalier, you're having fun. You know, it really is. Uh, it's a great, it's a great memory. It's a great thing to see. And I think you, no one's going to say. I mean, you had about as mo most fun as anyone could ever have playing the World Series. And, and you make it every year. Is that? I mean, obviously this year was COVID. I, I haven't played it in like five years or so. Oh. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I really have. You know, I thought about it. I said, you know what? It's it's kind of like, what's the point? What, what am I going to do? Play it and win? Come on. So what's the point, right? Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a long time. It's a long time. And I just don't have the patience to sit there for that long. And I get bored. I'll sit down at a, I'll sit down at a tournament. I'll say, all right, I just bought in for 500 bucks. I'm going to play about four hours. I'm going to have about six beers. And then I'm done. <laughs> and sometimes I get kind of lucky. I remember I mean, last year I played at the Borgata and uh, I had a whole week to do nothing. I said, well, you know what? I'll go there and play and I'll just grind it out. And I, I think I almost made the final table or something at Borgata there, uh, like a $2,500 event. Yeah, I've so, seen your Borgata runs. I mean, that's a nice one. Nice venue, nice casino, not too far away. You seem right. to be comfortable there. You've had a couple of, you know, 40, 50, 60K scores bubbling final tables, getting deep. Uh, I did see you did win a tournament. You have you have won one before, too. Uh, it looks like this 40K for first in 2007, and you maybe have won uh, a few others. What do you think is – what What are one of the things that you think is is your your superpower? That you, you say you're, you're patient, you have some set rules. Like, what, what, what allows you to really not do much work studying? Like, are you just kind of at your aptitude of game strong? What are your skill set that makes you be able to compete and do well? Because there's you got to be – you say you're your fourth best in your home game, this and that, Steve, but I'll tell you what, like there's definitely, you must have a knack for it. Like you've got some tricks and ability and re is it reading people? Is it, is it discipline? What do you believe makes you be able to be successful? Yeah, I, I think the, um, I'm very good at problem solving and uh, I'm very good at, you know, the, the little things, only a small mistake not to call a raise, you know? So I'm about the, you know, I'm, if I'm in a situation, the whole idea is, you know, you're in a situation at the poker table and you're not really sure. And this could be, this could wipe you out. It's like, you know what, let's just pass on this. Leave your, leave your, you know, your testosterone at home. And uh, there's going to be another hand. And as we know, um, at, as poker at, at the table, you pick on the week. You're going to stay away from really strong guys at the table and you're going to grab money. And then after a while, you're going to leave the table and go some the other table. Right. 
So uh, until you finally get down to the final table. So it's about picking on the week. Now, I'm pretty much the weak or the, you know, the less less experienced at the table. But um, and uh, there, there's just certain guys you can kind of figure out to kind of stay away. And then there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be opportunities to steal, as we know, and, and just using but problem solving and kind of figuring those out and, and really looking at the looking at the pot of gold, the rainbow at the end, knowing that it's like, wow, you know, uh, this is what we're playing for. And I remember at the World Series, I said, man, when I got there um, at the, uh, the, the final table, I said, man, we're all guaranteed a million bucks. Right. And I'm thinking every time someone gets knocked out, it's another because I want to buy a boat. Every time someone gets knocked off, it's another two feet on the boat, you know, and it's like it's one million. 1250, one and a half million, two million, two and a half, three, you know, and it's like, man, just just sit here and let them all knock themselves out, you know? And then uh, it was kind of funny that one time they're like, look, I know I'm up against great guys at the final table. And and Mattisau bluffed me and showed it, kind of like rubbed it in my face a little bit. And at that point there, I brought the testosterone back and I'm like, you know what? I will push these chips in every time and put the pressure on you guys. And it was funny because that's what I was doing. But later on, card player was doing the announcing on the side and they recorded it. And I listened to it on the internet, the card player. And they had Phil uh, um, uh, Helmuth there commentating and a couple other guys and stuff. And they're like, this guy, damn, man, this is, I don't know where this guy came from. He's crazy. He just pushes. His game is just push, push, push. <laughs> and uh, and they said, and Joe even said later on, he said, we didn't know what Steve would think. He's just pushing. He's just pushing, you know? And they're like, so uh and and you know then i tightened up and so forth but, isn't it funny how it works so you know hashem who he ends up getting in i remember the queen seven of diamonds to nines with maybe five left or six left or something right for his life gets there and then he comes back i mean it's just like like variants and it's such good i think poker has so many life lessons and so much how you deal with winning how you deal with losing how you conduct yourself similar to golf you golf with the guy you see does he cheat does he you know how does he handle when you hit a nice shot how, how does he handle when he, you know, is he humble? Is like, you just kind of get to see how people are. And, and it's just interesting too the variance and the things in life, like a tournament, sort of like bets. If you make bets or investments, you know, you suck 10 K buy-in, but you play a hundred or 200 or $500 buy-in tournament and you maybe oh, yeah. do well, or you don't make it. And then you play the 10 K and you get second for 4 million. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. Like the variance and the luck. And, you know, I'd say poker is one of those perfect games of luck and skill. Like there's enough of luck where it's exciting, but there's still a lot of decision making. Sure. Oh, so, you know, it's pretty cool. What what, would, what other games do you like? Did you did you play board games or video games growing up at all? I mean, get probably not video games. Not really. No, yeah, no board games, just uh, some some poker and rummy, things like that. Um, uh, you, you know, it's funny. Uh, I'd have different friends uh, and I, I'd, I'll go play a $200, $300 tournament. And they're like, Adam, it must be broke. He's over there playing a three hundred dollar tournament. I'm like, I get the same thrill out of a three hundred dollar tournament that I do as a ten thousand dollar tournament. You know, right. so uh, and I, I tell people, I say, you know, I play poker for fun, not for the money. I have a day job for that. Right. So no, it's, it's awesome. I'm I'm the same way. I love I love poker. It, it's a great game. There's a lot of fun to it. And and you know, I think if you take the ego out of it, then like same thing. I can go play two five with my dad or my, my friends and, and have a great time. And I, I, I actually play the same, you know, cause I, I want to play as I practice, as I play, I want to win. I want to make good decisions. And it doesn't really, I hear people say, Oh, if I play, you know, $1, $2 and I'm used to playing bigger stakes, I can't play right. I, I never got that because like, for me, it's all the same game. You know, it's like, it's just, you, you want to make, you want to win, you want to play well and you want to you know, have a good time. So I, I think it's important to be able to separate that. It sounds like you have no problem. Well, it's kind that. of fun at the table. Sometimes I get so bored in a sense that I'll uh, uh, I'll be under the gun, and the uh, you know the dealer will give me the first card, and I'll raise it up, not even looking, and I'll play the hand almost down to where I'm not looking at all. And it's kind of fun because uh, and, and some people pick up on it at the table, some don't. Sometimes you actually wake up with a hand, right. <laughs> you know, and, and and you'll end up having to, uh, to to look after the flop or the turn, um, and uh, it just that just makes it more interesting for me, you know, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Actually I had, uh, I had a couple, a couple notes here on that, but, um, you said that the, I mean, are you still are playing poker every week. Is that true? Are you still playing? No, no, I haven't, I haven't played the home game. God, we haven't played the home game in like 10 years or so. 
But um, every now and then, I had a home game not too long ago back in, uh, I'd call it probably April or May. I, I just I just built the house down here on the Chesapeake Bay about two years ago. So I'm in the basement. I got the house cleaner upstairs right now. And uh, so we had a game down here at the uh, at, in the house and stuff. And uh, I was the first out both times. You could rebuy once. And I ended up going up to, to a buddy of mine, went up to the restaurant bar up the street while everybody finished out. So, um, yeah, I, I've only played – Played poker one time in the last year. Wow! Yeah, it's a, a or so. For um, sure. What What about online poker? Have you Did you ever play any at all, or never got so into it? I, I played um, before the World Series. I played a little bit of party poker and all, but you know, back then the connections were really bad and, and stuff like that. So after the World Series, I played on. Um, Absolute tried to giving me a contract to play on there, right? They want to give me like, I don't know, $80,000. You had to spend half of that in buy-ins and stuff. And then you had to play 20 hours a week. And they said, Steve, I don't care if you play one cent, two cent. You got to play 20 a week. Well, that was overwhelming to me. I'm like, that's like a job. Like, they're my boss. I said, I can't do that. But anyway, I played on Absolute one time. And I was, uh, I played in this tournament on a Monday. And I thought it was just a, a little cash tournament. But it had to be you won a, a, a satellite seat to the Saturday tournament. Okay. And uh, I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was a $500 buy-in or something. So all week, I'm bitching and complaining that I've got to play on this tournament on Saturday. It's during the summer. I don't play poker like that. I like, you know, having fun and all. So I sat around the pool and started playing this tournament. I, I signed up an hour late for it, okay? And uh, ended up, after the sun went down, went in the house, and I'm playing, and I end up winning. I won the tournament for like 41000 And wow. it was funny because... Silverman had his biggest score the week before for like 20 some thousand. And, and he's like, you're always one up in me, aren't you? You're always one up in me. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. So uh, that, that was wild. I'm like, that, I was more excited about that than the World Series of Poker. You should have seen me. I was like, uh, and I put so many bad beats on these guys. It was incredible. <laughs> that's that's a, that's strong i mean but well, you said you're lucky but that's still i'm telling you you can be lucky but still to win you have to have a certain there's got to be a certain style because guys that are not maybe good players and are weak and passive and don't know how to make moves you know how to play big pots you must understand some concepts about you know what blind stacks to shove pairs sure. on opens. like you have some idea because you you can't just not have an idea and, and do yeah you know, even if i pretty much know with what you know, what, what uh, Harrington had said about the the uh, I think it was the the M factor and stuff. I used a lot of that. It was funny because we were on the the fifth day of the the World Series. All right, we're going on break, and I'm very low. I'm very low, and um, I call Silverman. I call my buddy Mark. I call Silverman. Silverman says, "Look, whatever you get," he says, "You know, you're at the point of you you're at an M of five, which is danger zone, which is probably like as you guys say, like about twenty big blinds." And um, he says, you're just going to have to push in. I'm very low. I got one foot out the door and one barely at the table, right? So <clears throat> the waitress, right before the break is over, I give her 20 bucks. I said, give me two Bloody Marys and make it fast. This 20 bucks is yours. She's like, I'm there. She runs up, gets over. I'm like, I got one sitting there, right? And all of a sudden, I start out with a pair of jacks, and I double up. And I get the chip leader right next to me, Rod Parday, all right? I double up. I double up again. I get fives. I hit a set of fives against this two pair. Then, lo and behold, who comes to the table? Russ Hamilton. Well, I'm about on my sixth Bloody Mary by now. All right. We all know Russ Hamilton from the 2000, uh, 1996, 1995. You know. Wow. Um, yeah. Yes. Russ comes at a table. I'm drunk now. Okay. How you doing? My name is Steve. What's your name? I'm Russ. Nice to meet you, Russ. I'm from Baltimore. Where are you from? I'm from Vegas. I'm not, not okay. We get in the very next hand. I bust him out. He leaves. It's nice meeting you. He leaves. Guy at the table says, you know who that was? I said, yeah, it's Russ. He said, no, no. That guy won the World Series of Poker in 1996. I said, well, he ain't winning it this year. He's not going to repeat it. <laughs> And yeah. since then, you know, Russ, Russ had a little couple of things going on and stole some money from people. And I see him down in Aruba. We go to Aruba every year. And I always, he's at the casino in Aruba at the yeah. Holiday Inn and the other place, whatever the other place was. Yeah. But uh, kind of funny. Yeah, yeah he's the he's <laughs> ultimate bet guy, right? 
yeah, he was an ultimate butt guy. Yeah, yeah that and, started uh, had some scan, a little bit of scandals. Uh, I heard a story about him too, some stuff. But yeah, so that's so you, you yeah. do that. You get on your way. At what, at what point did you think you could really do it? Because you really have no inkling. Like, listen, I know the reality of getting to a final table of a World Series of the main event. I know it's almost impossible now. And there's a lot of entries. Whatever. When did you actually double up? Like, were you nervous at the very start? When did you settle in? At the end of the night, right? This is that we're into a, we, we got one, we have two more levels to go, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm one foot out the door. At the end of the night, two levels later, I'm fifth in chips and smashed. I can't even, I get up, I walk away from the table and the, uh, the, um, the dealer says, hey, sir, get back here. You got to count these chips and, 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 and bag them. Bag and tag. I can't even see those chips. I threw my card out and I said, I'm going, I'm going to the hard rock. See you there, buddy. And him and a buddy came over actually to deal. I was hilarious. Um, the, uh, so I, I did sit at the table as, as time was progressing on. And if you kind of focus and just take all of the white noise out, all the people talking and listen to the noise in the background, you can hear the people, you know, flipping their chips and stuff, you know, uh, shuffling their chips. And that's really, if you just concentrate on that, you can hear it. And I said to myself, at some point in time, Steve, you're going to bust and you're going to be walking at that door and you're going to hear those chips. And the further you get down that hallway, the less you're going to hear those chips and it's going to finally be solid. So just prepare yourself for this. And it was funny. The chips stopped shuffling. The noise stopped when they turned over the final card when I lost. So it's kind of and it. What the question was, well, what point did you think you had a shot at this? After we got to the final two days, all I was really thinking, I wasn't concentrating on, I was concentrating on the money. The side, you want to add some feet to the boat. It wasn't until six months later that I'm sitting there and I'm reading the magazine with Joe in it and all, and I'm, I'm like, wow, that was pretty spectacular. I was pretty lucky. Wow, maybe. So here's a funny thing. I'm sitting by the pool for three days reading Harrington, right? I get down to the heads up part. Well, like, what the fuck do I need the heads up part for? So I don't read the heads up part of the uh, of Harrington. Yeah, book. kind of kind of wild, right? Like, yeah, you know, boy, that's a waste of time. Yeah, right? that's silly. Yeah, it's kind of like making your bed. Why make your bed? It's wasted time. <laughs> it, so let me ask you something. I actually, this is what I wanted to say right when you said this story, and and I. You, you mentioned when you and Steve got a heads up, what was the chip dis, uh, disparity at that point? Do you remember? Uh, what, what, what do you mean? Tax? Where, where is it close to even? Oh, uh, yeah, he had two thirds. I had a third of the chips. Oh, so it's pretty much anyone's game still. I mean, it's a decent anyone's game. game. So anyone's you game. said to Steve, you, so how many big lines? Do you remember? Was it 20, 100? How deep were you? You know, I, I, I want to say, I, I don't know the answer to that question. But I'll tell you what I had a hard time. I had a hard time kind of figuring, you know, I'm, I'm in the, the Harrington mode three times. You know, back then it's three times whatever the bet is. And I, I kind of keep concentrating of how much the big blinds are and how much three. And and then the other thing that was distracting to me, I, said, I know it sounds crazy, but after you want a pot, they pushed it. Now you got to stack your chips up. Well, while you're stacking your chips up, your cards are sitting there for the next hand. So it was almost like I couldn't concentrate in a sense. Does that make sense? I'm not yeah. blaming that, but it was like, that was yeah. distracting. So I got to ask you, I guess this is the one thing that doesn't make sense to me, what I hear you saying. You beat all the odds. You lock up $4 million, You get the heads up versus Joe, who's also not, I mean, listen, he, he knows what he's doing, but he wasn't like a super professional. He's, sure. like, he's a business guy of sorts. Like he's also not, you know, you're not playing like a jungle man or, you know, a wizard. He's no, he's a, he's on the, he, the point I'm trying to say is you said this will be over in five or six hands. It was almost I like, I, gave up. I was so tired. I think I just gave up. I know, like, come on, man. Take a, get your, get your, uh, get your Red Bull double espresso margarita and get, get, get going. What, like, why does Steve Daneman nail it in then? It's almost like you didn't want to win. And, 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 you know, not to use it as an excuse though. Okay. I fought back at it. I've got a great excuse. It was almost like it, I, I wasn't supposed to win because I thought about fast forward in my life. If I had won, right. first of all, I may have thought I was good. Okay. 
Number two, I mean, I was invited to a lot of things, but as the poker ambassador from the United States of this, like, you know, this accountant guy who just had fun. I mean, Joe had a great ambassadorship, but it would have been probably three or four times bigger with me. Just saying, per se. Of course. People told me. I agree with that completely. I and agree. I would have been, I would have had to make a decision between my accounting business, which I just celebrated 30 years to start my own business. And, yeah. and you know, could I, and I let it go to the wayside for about two years to a sense. I was still showing up at tax season and so forth. But um, that would have made, uh, at that point, that would have made, uh, let's think about the money, seven and a half million. I get three and a half, or, you know, seven and a half, I get three, you know, uh, and then the IRS gets it. So I walk away with what would I walk away? Two million then? Two million at five percent is a hundred grand. And then you're eating away at it. You still have to have a job. And then I had more lucrative things that came along, like with flipping houses and stuff. I flipped like 150 houses in the last 10, 12 years. Right. Um, yeah, so it's I think that for a reason. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm against yeah. that. I think the same in certain things and spots and you got to be happy and grateful and everything kind of does work out. And it, it sometimes, sometimes in the immediate moment, something may seem like, oh, it could have been better or different, but maybe that's exactly what needed to happen for, for whatever, you know? And I think so. I think it was all in the cards. Uh, you know, thinking back, would I like the one? Yeah, I like the one. Would I have given up winning versus my life thereafter? No. If they would say, you win and you're going to do all these things, and you don't get to go forward what happened to you, you know, the next 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, no, no. You know what? I'll take I'll take door number one coming yeah. in second. I like yeah. that. Never I thought about it, but it's that's that, that's you know, going forward. I don't want to switch, you know. You know, it's like it's like let's make a deal. You got five hundred in your hand or you want door number two. It could be, you know, a car or it could be a mule. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd say I'd say it worked out pretty well. And I again I know you fairly well. Uh, you are my, my accountant. We talk, we, we keep in touch and I know that you've got a nice thing going and you've got a great family life and everything is, uh, you know, you're pretty, you are maybe you're one of the luckiest men in the world. That's for sure. You got you gotta everything working. Out for you. Um, give me a tax, give me some tax advice. Cause I, I would say, uh, we, we talk, we, we do our stuff. I just, as a CPA, let's just shift to that. Cause I, I, I know one of the notes here that I have, as you say, a successful tax season is based on organi organization and preparation. And I approach the tournament in much the same way. Let's just talk about being organized and people with taxes and stuff. Like, give me a trick or a hack. Cause like right so, now the year's coming so, with, uh, with business. I always think, you know, when you have your business, you're always, you always want to do better. And every year you want to get, you can't keep be complacent, just like poker. You just can't say, Hey, we're just going to use Harrington and that's it because everyone you're going to fall behind. So um, I'm very organized, you know, organization is, and, and um, being organized, I even like, not, like four or five years ago, I, done, I started doing online tax appointments where they would schedule their, 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 their tax appointment online to come into the office and so forth. But um, uh, as a CPA, I've got to take 40 hours of continuing education every year to keep my license. Mm. Uh, but um, just being in the zone, being ready from day one, February 1st, just when that door opens up, just being ready. Kind of like poker. It's kind of like, don't, you know, be there for the first hand. Don't be late. You're going to get information from these guys early on. So even if you don't sit there and play a single hand, you're going to get information. And you might just get to a point where you can double up or triple up, you know, yeah. in that first table. And yeah, that that's the opposite of Phil Helmuth, who likes to come sure. late, they register some other guys. I want to mention Phil Helmuth because he won that main event when you were deep in Europe. You also, you had a bit of, there was a, let's take a look here, because I think there was a note. My dad makes some notes on podcasts. There was something, I believe, maybe it was this thing, this 100K thing, this Tournament of Champions. Oh, uh, uh, the Tournament of Champions. What a fun yeah. time. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, what a group. What a group that is. Mattis ends up winning the Helmuth Theater. I think you guys had a little bit of an incident. Didn't you kind of get on Helmuth's case about I did. It was kind of funny. You know, uh, uh, Helmuth is sitting at the table, and he's taking all of his his, his uh, anti-chips, as he calls them, his slower chips, and he's got them spread all over the place. And uh, and he's taking up a lot of time to, like, if somebody wants a count, he's got to stack them up and then give them a count, and then he folds or something like that. So it was just – it was irritating. It was right. irritating. And uh, – uh, and he kept on doing this. And then finally I said something to the tournament director. I said, Hey, you know, uh, get this guy to stack his chips, you know? And 
And then Phil gets in it with the tournament director, and I'm kind of taking up for the tournament director, and I just kind of lose it. I'm like, man, you know, no one should buy your books or, or your videos. You're nothing but a punk. And it went crazy. I mean, I get so many still people come up to me and say, dude, you call them out. Helmet and calling him a punk was so cool. So I'm at the table, okay? I'm at the table at the Bellagio. And this is like six months later. Helmet comes up to the table. And I saw him in LA and I said, look, I was out of line. I apologize. But he comes up to the poker table at the Bellagio. And 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 he must have seen on TV. He says, Steve, you look so bad on TV. You just really look bad. I said, yeah, Phil, I'm playing poker here. He says, you know, I, 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 he said, I was hanging out with Michael Jordan the other day. And he said, what's up with that guy, Daneman? And I looked at Phil and I stood back at the table and I said, you mean Michael Jordan knows Steve Daneman? I said, that is so cool. And then he just walked away. I mean, imagine that, you know? I mean, everyone knows Jeff Gross, but being nobody and Michael Jordan's talking about you, is that fucking awesome or what? <laughs> that's, uh, he that's, walked away. that's pretty funny. I mean, you know, it's kind of interesting to think like that too because – Anyone in poker and even back, you know, ESPN, that 2003, four, five moneymaker, of course, having that name, he was a CPA as well. Kind of like, so obviously you were, did, I mean, did, did you think that was possible then at that time you saw moneymaker did it? Was that sort of like, did that, is that where you first sort of registered this world series? Was it no, you know, it was a, it was a bucket list thing. It was a bucket list thing. And uh, so I, I had a little, um, so, so that year I'd actually in, in, in 04, I bought my house and I plan on putting a pool around there. And I went out and I bought these patio pavers. That was 950 square feet of patio pavers. They were two inches thick and two feet wide by two feet wide. And uh, for two months, I, uh, I put all the patio pavers around the pool. And it meant I had to do these French curves. I had to buy a thousand dollar saw with this diamond blade, right? So get this done. It comes out perfect, great. Now comes the World Series of Poker. I'm going to do the driveway, right? I said, you know, you busted your butt like crazy doing that. All right. If you do the driveway, then you can play in the World Series of Poker. But then I chickened out the last minute. I said, you know what? I'm getting somebody else to do this driveway. I had a good year because I was a, a mortgage guy, a CPA, but I was also selling mortgages at the time. And mortgage, the refinance market was crazy. I was making so much money. It was unreal. It was just was awesome. And... Um, so I had someone do it. I said, oh, I'm still going to go out there. Maybe I'll find a partner as Jerry, though. So uh, that was the, the, the premise behind behind uh, going in the World Series and stuff. But, I, you know, I watched it on TV. It was cool. It was really exciting like anyone. I never imagined I could make the final table. Uh, and, you know, I, even sometimes I got a buddy, Nick, and Nick will send me a message every now and then. He'll say, Steve. Remember the time you made the final table of the World Series of Poker and came in second? And it's just kind of like a laughing back and forth on, on texting yourself. But it's just, it's, it's just. That's like, what I was going to say. I mean, you're kind of, people know or have seen you, or like you're one of those guys, you probably get recognized, or people like remember, they're like, oh, you look from, you know, it's it just, it was a, it was those oh, some of the highlight WSOP events, the biggest every day. prize pools. And, and, and that's got to be fun. You know, it's kind of like a nice it, memory you'll always have. Like, it's must, funny. People, because people still come up to me now and they say, and they, they give me, I know the look, I know that look, they're like, and they're like, I know you're from someplace. I said, eh. I said, I do your taxes. They're like, no. And I usually tell them, I said, I said, do, uh, uh, I said, do you serve any time? And they're like, no, no, no. I said, oh, well, you must watch porn. I do porn. <laughs> it was funny though. One time at the, uh, God, I have so many stores. I, I was at the Rio, I was sitting at the, the all American bar, eating my chicken wings, playing some video poker. And, and, and the uh, the manager says, man, I, I know you from someplace. I said, did you do any time? He says, yeah. I never had anyone say that. I'm like, shit. He's like, uh, he's like, where, 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 where were you? I said, man, I was in a lot of different places. So he goes in the back. He comes back up. He says, so you work there? And I, were you a prison guard? I said, no, man, if I was a prison guard, I would have let everybody out. Right? So he leaves. You know, like five minutes later, he comes back. I said, man, I got to be honest with you. All right, I wasn't in jail. I'm in porn. <laughs> he starts laughing. And I was like, oh. It was it was funny to me. Most people won't think that's that. awesome. No, I think that is funny. It's funny because you like legitimately probably get that. Yeah, you get that look a lot, and it's uh, it happens to me as well. Sometimes where someone's like, "Man, you look familiar," and like same thing. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it's from yeah. I do poker stuff, but they're like, "Nah." It's just it's kind of weird. Like they know they. I can't. never tell anybody about poker. I never tell them about poker. I'll eventually come through. I'm, I'm standing in line at the Borgata. I think you you may know this guy, right? Standing in line at the Borgata, right? 
and I'm going to the Murmur nightclub, and this guy comes up to me and says, hey, um, I'm an athlete from Baltimore. I watched on TV. You did really good, and I'm smashed. I'm smashed. I'm like, yeah, yeah, buddy. Nice. All right. And I walk away, right? So I get this phone call from this guy, Matt Simon. You know Matt, right? Simon? Simon, right? I, Matt I, called, I, I, I called him. Matt. I said, Matt, hey, what's going on? He says, hey, I'm, uh, I'm down here at Sparrows Point playing uh, golf. Someone wants to talk to you. I said, oh, okay. Guy gets on the phone. He says, Danneman, you're a dick. I said, I've heard of that before. <laughs> Michael Phelps. Absolutely. I met Mike. You've heard that story. Yeah. I met Mike before at the Murmur. Didn't know it was Mike. I actually and, have a picture. I have a picture with you. I think with you and Mike from Murmur. I, I have a ton of, I, I'll find it. I will go right. through that. That'd be great. <laughs> from probably the first time ever. Because I remember... We were going there. It was probably, yeah, it must have been oh eight or nine or seven. Even. No, it was two thousand seven. I and I okay. had that's right. And we were at Murmur, and we have pictures with you there. And I, I remember that exactly. So I will find those because they're great. Like they're from literally yeah thirteen years ago, and uh, I, I remember this. So well, yeah, the first time I met you was at Silverman's uh, Halloween party. Yeah, and uh, and I met Mike. I was the first time I remember meeting Mike, and, and Mike says, "You you golf?" I said, "Yeah." He says, "I'm not really good. You want to go golf next week?" I said, "Sure." He says, uh, "I said you drink." He says, "Yeah." I said, "We'll get along fine." Yeah, you guys hit <laughs> it right off. That's right. No, I remember that. That was the uh, I, I know exactly the I, that was 2009. But um, I yeah, man, that was great. That, I love living in Baltimore. It was a great time. I lived there for seven years, and uh, no, yeah. it's a good group. Those guys actually. Um, you know, I see Silverman and Matt now and again. Well, Silverman, I see a lot. Matt, I see sometimes he's more, you know, when I'm back in Florida, I see, I do see them. And I, and Matt, Matt has a daughter. You have two daughters. I think right. around your, your daughter is yeah, yeah. Six, five, six, five, six years old now. So yeah, yeah it's awesome. Well, Steve, I do want to take, I do want to take some questions. Okay, sure. I, uh, we, we, uh, looking, we did, I and mean, we scrolled through the career first ever term. It's funny on the podcast, the majority of people, on this podcast, the first ever tournament, they did make the final table. You actually take down the the next tournament you take, you take first. I mean, that's pretty crazy. You went triple final table, four out of five final tables to start. Uh, what was this one, by the way, this $1,000 that you hopped in? I mean, that's pretty funny to just win. Uh, the, uh, was it the, was it the uh, Bellagio? Yeah. That was, that's so cool. You know what? I, I got to show you something. I don't know if you can see this picture on the floor. Can you see that? Oh, one sec. Uh, yes. I, so after I won that tournament, I went and bought that picture from like Peter LK or somewhere in the a, Yeah. Yeah. Peter links. Right. You know that, don't you? Yeah. That's awesome. I, uh, I went over there. I don't know. I, I went over there and I, I played the tournament and I used, I used the same philosophy that I used for the world series. And, uh, I won the tournament and, uh, I don't know. I won like 26,000 or something. I don't even remember. And I went and bought that over the gallery and I bought that picture. It was really cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen, we got uh this is podcast number 111. It happens to be a $111 giveaway as well. If you guys want to ask a question for Steve, if you're here, we will go ahead and take some of these. So Steve, you ready to dive into some questions? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Let's hit it. Um, so, so first one, Craig Leonard asks, has your style changed since your deep run? Have you, have you, in the last yes. year, you noticed a big change? Yeah, I mean, with, with poker, you're evolving, you know, back then it was Harrington and now it's like, you know, raise on anything uh, and, and re-raise with nothing. So uh, poker's continually progressed. I think now we're at a little bit probably of a plateau, but um, yeah, my, 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 I've changed. I've loosened up a lot more, had a lot more fun. Like I said, the, the World Series was boring because you're sitting there only playing the top 10 hands, you know. Um, so in a lot of times at the World Series, I missed a lot of hands because I'd wait for everyone else to go to the bathroom. And when it started, then I'd go down the bathroom, go in the bathroom, wash up good, do what you need to do, get a little something to eat or something and come back. Be like half hour later, you know, miss some hands. And my whole philosophy was, you know, I can't bust. I can't bust where I hit if I'm not sitting at the table, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> and the blinds yeah. back then were so long. There are two hour levels and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Your strategy worked out perfectly. That's for sure. Uh, what about sports? Do you play any sports? Just golf, golf, uh, golf and fish. Uh, I bought a house. I built a house on the water here on the Chesapeake Bay. So, uh, fish and crab and, and, and things like that. Um, 
other than that, no sports. I started uh, I, working. I got to ask a lot more. I love it. Golf. Yeah. Golf's a good one. That's a, that is a nice, that's a nice one you can do. And, and it, it's a fun social game, very similar to poker. Uh, there's a question about superstitious. you said you have superstitious. I actually saw one about a cab. Is that true that you won't it's get true. it? It's true. It was like, uh, so I go to world series, you know, the idea is get past the first day. Right. So I, I, I pick out this special shirt, you know, and I wait to the first day. So I wear the shirt the first day and make it to the second day. I'm like, Christ, what am I, what, what, what shirt am I going to use? So I wore the same shirt for seven days in a row, but I'm out front, right? Frank is out front. I get in the limo. Frank's from Eastern Shore in Maryland, right? We get to talk. Yeah, I'm in this tournament, World Series of Poker, and 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 the cab uh, uh, was an even number cab, and I just had to remember it that day. Okay, all right. So the whole idea is, whatever I do today, I'm going to do tomorrow because I made it to the tournament. I'm wear the same shirt. We're going to go the same route. We're going to wear so. Next day, Frank's out there. He says, hey, Steve, how'd you do? I said, man, I made it, buddy. All right. He says, all right, here's your cab. I said, oh, can't take that one's number three. I said, what do you mean? I said, no, I didn't need an even number. That's nine, Frank. You know what even numbers are? Even one, uh, even numbers, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, Steve. The third one comes up, I get an even one. So the guy goes out. He's going to turn right out of, uh, out of the, uh, I was at the uh, Treasure Island. I said, no, 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 no. We got to go left. He says, what are you talking about? I said, go left. I said, I said you want to be tipped? He said, yeah. I said, go left. Take the left way. He says, okay. So it's hilarious, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So you see so, some real this went on for five straight days, and the tips got bigger because as we got in the money, they're getting $100 tips, you know? So uh, it, it was just superstitious stuff, man. You know? I love it. I love it. I also, this advice, this is something that stands out to me that, um, you know, most people come into, who come into a financial windfall just blow it away, but that won't happen to me. So, you were going to, you said, I'm going to follow the advice I give to my clients, recognize that this is a very rare opportunity and just hold on to the money. This is something I will say in my experience from myself, from others, this is very true. When you come into a score, if you have a piece of somebody, if you get lucky or you hit a tournament, it's a really good idea to hold on to the money and tuck it away, even for like a month or two and like sit back because it's so easy. If you're not used to having something or you come into something very quickly, you just, oh, like I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to invest in that. This guy wants, oh, my distant cousin wants me to put money into solar or cannabis. Like just like money just starts flying around, you know, so like right. you have it, own it and take ownership. And I think that's like really a valuable lesson. Uh, you know, Bill Perkins mentioned to me as well, what they do in these funds, when you hit a big score, they make you cash it out. And then you decide if you want to come back in because it's sort of like online poker. If you hit a big score, it's like not really real. I know guys like win for hundred K a million you know, whatever it's in your account. Ah, like it's whatever crypto, you know, you had 10 grand in Bitcoin. Now it's worth 250. Ah, it's like, ah, it's there. But if you actually like take it out and hold it, you're not going to like put it back in for 250 into Bitcoin, you know, cause like it's real now. Take it off the table, take some off the table. It's right. You know, a lot of people always ask me, so Steve, you want all that money. What did you buy? You ready for this? I bought a refrigerator. It was an $8,000 refrigerator that I put in the basement for beer because it fit just perfectly. And when I built my house here, I brought that refrigerator with me. It's in my kitchen. However, just had a little repair problem and it's like 1500. So it's a 15 year old refrigerator. So I have to get rid of it. But that was the only thing I bought in the, uh, from the world series of poker. You were talking about feet per boat on, on pay jumps. Did you get a boat? Never end up getting a boat. And, and, and uh, six years ago, I bought a used boat. It was like 22 years old. It's a Parker. It's a 25 foot Parker. And um, had original uh, two strokes. So last year, I just put a new uh, four stroke on there. But now it's a, what, what's it like, uh, 26, 27 years old? I, I, have, I don't know the pricing on boats exactly. Like what would be a 22, like a 20 year old boat? So a 25 right? Parker runs about $130,000. And I got it for like 22,000. And the whole idea, you know, when you buy a boat, you know, people want to like wash it and wax it up, make it look pretty, but it's the mentality. Then they won't use it as much. My thing, I'm going to wash it once a year. I'm not worried about hitting it against the pier and stuff. I'm going out to have fun on it, you know? And the bottom line is when you sell it, you're not going to get much more if you had waxed it every day and made it look pretty, you know? So that's a philosophy. You don't buy a lot of philosophies on different things. And that's about boats. Use it, have fun with it, you know? And don't worry about cleaning it up. That's that's awesome. Uh, someone just said, Craig, Craig in the, the chat here said, your ears are burning. You were mentioned during a live stream yesterday. Folks were wondering how you were and agreed you were great for poker. Uh, hello. So, yeah, good to see you, Craig. And actually, that's a question. Someone asked, do you have a favorite streamer? Do you, I, I imagine you don't watch much poker. Do you watch any 
Uh, no, I don't. I don't know anything about the streaming. Uh, I don't watch any poker. Uh, I watch it on TV once in a while when it's on. But uh, uh, you know, I, I love. I tell you, one of my favorite poker players is Mattisau. People ask, well, who's your favorite poker?" And and I, I, you know, Phil and I butt heads. But I really respect Phil. I mean, what he's done and accomplished is. I mean, uh, and, and is it, is he entitled to be a little arrogant? And I think it's all a show. You know, Phil real well, and I think Phil's a great guy and stuff like that. He's fun. It, he's He's entertaining. If there was no Phil, poker would be boring, right? I, I agree. I mean, that, I think I think that's one of the biggest things. Looking back on all three, four, five, six, the World Series coverage, people talking, people having a good time. It's sort of gone away from that, and I think that's one of the big things we're missing. Guys like Phil, Umberto Brennis, Mike Matisau, they're characters. You like them, hate them, don't like their style. Like they're 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 eccentric. They're fun. people like that. Uh, the best tournament ever to watch was that tournament of champions in two thousand and five. We. If you can YouTube that final table, that is a classic. And there will never be a better table of, of, of people at the table. And poker skill as well. And poker skill as well. With Mattisell, Hoyt Corkins, and uh, uh, Phil. I mean, those guys, they, they were down to the final three. Those guys were just hilarious. Oh, my God. This Mattisell is just, he's off the cuff. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, those are definitely some of the bigger characters. What, what do you feel about the, the rules with... Um, table talk because I, my my thing i talked to matt savage he was on the podcast as well and chat with him about the rules and there's sort of a misconception so i think it was a year after jamie gold 2006 that sure. he sort of changed the rule he was showing cards it was over the top he was sort of doing stuff and that seemed like they kind of you know put the kibosh on that and and i think it's not really understood the real rules because like now i don't if you go to the borgata let's say and you're in there in the hand heads up in the river steve and you say to me Hey, Jeff, man, I think, man, I really feel like you have ace king here. Like, you can't say that stuff, but Matt Savage is sort of saying that's not necessarily the right rule. I feel dealers and staff are trained to not really encourage and just dis actually discourage talking at all. Where sure. I think you can a bit. It's a little confusing. What's your I, I think um I think for you to say, hey, you know, Steve, I really think you have ace king when you're ready to call something. I mean, what I don't think that changes anything. Now, what Jamie Gold did, I think, was really, I, I think that was bad. I think that should be prohibited. So, um, yeah, but like, uh, you know, a big talker is Will Fahila, you know, Will and, yeah. and Will is, is just a notch below Jamie Gold. Yeah. Well, uh, like a Kasuf kind of like, talker, yeah, not really. Uh, uh, so, uh, and Will's a good guy, you know, he, he's, he's a good poker player and stuff like that. But so I, I, I think there's a fine line and I think it's kind of hard to regulate, you know, uh, what you can and can't say. So, um, I guess, you know, they, they, they side on not saying anything. Like right. That. I think that's really what it comes down to just to make it so because it's too too ambiguous. There's too much room for interpretation. If you tell the dealers like, oh, this is OK, this is not like they're just that by default. They say, hey, don't let players talk. But the problem is you talk about the weather. You're in the hand. You're making a joke or man, I really think you got it here. They're like, no, you know, like it's just kind of like, it's right. Like, I feel it's confusing. Should we ever say that? And I, I think dealers aren't trained well. I mean, uh, you know, people always have problems like, oh, it's a bad deal or this thing or that thing. I think it's about training. And then they just, they don't really train the people to, to you know, a, a table. And it's like, look, they're making plenty of money. Do a little investing, you know, but that's just, that's just the world we live in. Yeah. What would be, what would be something, is there anything that would make you uh, want to play more? Is it the speed of the tournaments? Is it rules? Is it the prize pools? What what would be like where you would say, you know what, this coming year, once COVID's over, I'm gonna try to play more poker. What what would make it more appealing to you? I guess if, if I if I made time for it, it would be that the the days weren't as long and it was a probably a little faster pace. Knowing yeah. that it's you know luck involved not as much anymore, but a little faster pace that's going on. I like the blinds where you one guy throws up the, the annies and stuff, Big stuff blind, like that. Yeah. I've only played like a couple of times. I don't really know much about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that, and, and I don't know, I think a, a little bit of table talk, you know, I, I don't want to sit there like a mute, you know, not have to say anything, you know, it's, uh, that, that's so fun. Yeah. I, I would definitely agree with that. What is, uh, what is something you're excited about coming up? Any projects or, I mean, you have two daughters, you have a daughter, I'm sorry, twins. One's a daughter. She just broke her arm. You're both daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Lily and Grace. Yes. identical twins yeah how is uh how has that been how has that impacted your life oh, it's great i mean i mean I, I have so much fun with my girls and we, we we travel a lot or we did travel a lot beforehand and uh we just do lots of fun things and and uh 
it's just uh, just just watching them. You know, you have a little one now, and and at age four is when they really are just they hit that point where they're super enjoyable there, and just the things they say every day, and and it, it's just a lot of fun. And, and you know, I'm kind of lucky because you know a lot of you know like yourself, you're younger, you're working and stuff. I don't work as much now, so I have a lot more time to be with the girls and yeah. do things. Uh, so, uh, you know, daddy, why you don't work too much. You don't work. I said, well, I wouldn't work last week. It'll be fine. <laughs> you know, but, and we just hang out we, we fish on the pier, you know, the girls love fishing on the pier and then they're like, daddy, can, can I throw the fish back? I said, you want to touch this fish? Like, yeah, I want to hold the fish. So I you know, they're holding the fish and I'm showing how to take it off the hook and how to bait the hook and, and things like that. So that's, that's a lot of fun. Then they get discouraged. They're like, daddy, we're not catching any fish. I was like, well, you're not always going to catch fish. Wait till the tide comes in a little bit and now. And put the pole near the uh, near, near the uh, the polling here. It's where they eat off the barnacles. So that's fun. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm like 54 right now, so uh, I don't I don't flip houses as much anymore. Um, I think we're in a. I, I think I don't know what's going on in the world, but the economy and stuff is kind of scary. What's going on there? But um, uh, I, I we'll be back to normal. I think we're not going to be back to normal till the end of next year or the year after. To be honest with you. Yeah, it's, it I does think, seem like uh, there's I a lot of change. Petitions yeah. in uh, the casinos, at, you know, at the tables and stuff, they're probably going to stay there for a while. You know, so we th this might be the new norm for a few years. Um, so, you know, it's, it's probably not as – have you played at a poker table since the glass has been up? No. Nope. Yeah, so uh, um, it's kind of, you know, so – but what's going on? I just enjoy the kids, man. I'm just, I'm just doing the kids and stuff. I guess that, that's like an interesting sort of always uh, catch 22 with the kids stuff. Like, you know, do you want to be a young parent? Do you want to be a little bit older? Cause there's just pluses and minuses, like almost anything in life. Like it's nice to be younger and, and, but then maybe you're still grinding, working hard and you're missing some of the time. Whereas if you're a little sure. bit older, you're just complete, you're more free. So I don't know. I mean, I think really life comes down to balance and it's, it's always, you know, it, it's just sort of a tricky thing, right? You want to be, you want to do have the best of everything, but sometimes it, there's some sacrifice or you know making schedules and 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 all that that that's got to be nice because I do feel sometimes too even like doing pocket doing stuff where I feel like oh man like I'm missing a bit I want to do more so I always want to be around you know my son because those those these times so valuable right you don't get it back oh, yeah. you just like well, you aren't well, sick again kind of like you asked about the World Series you said you know I haven't played in the last five years because it's during the summertime and I, I don't want to spend ten days in Vegas. I want to go to the beach. We go to the beach every weekend. We got a place down in Ocean City, Maryland, and uh, I take the kids to the water park. Then we go over to the rides, and then we go get some cotton candy and ice cream, you know. Or we'll take our pontoon boat out to Assateague and sit on the beach and you know make sandcastles and play in the water and, and things like that. And, right. Yeah. World Series of Poker is always going to be there. It's going to be there twenty years from now. Those kids sitting on the beach. I, I can't imagine them being 22 years old, wanting to sit on the beach with me and making sandcastles then, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so that's time to do it. No, it's, a great, it's a great point. And it, it's something, again, Bill, I mentioned he has this book called Die With Zero. I don't know if you've had a chance to see that or check it out, but it's, it's kind of about this, talking about pockets of your life, experiences that you do, certain things are for certain times. And you only get these windows. Like you only yeah. get the time, your kid's only two once, he's only four once, they're only six once, they're only eight, 10. And yeah, I mean, like, you know, you'll get another, we get a kind of another wave as parents. Like we, we once they, they, you know, you empty nest, go away. You kind of have another chance to sort of do some other stuff for yourself. But right now, uh, as a parent, you want to try to maximize that. Yeah. Those. I mean, the other day it was raining a couple of weeks ago. It was raining. I'm like, girls, get your, get your boots on. We're going out and we're going to go play in the puddles. I'm like, what? I'm like, come on, we're going to go play in the puddles. And we splashed around in the puddles while it was raining. And we come in like, dad, that was crazy. And we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it is fun how did you how did you meet your wife you guys are you've been married for how long i used to her uh taxes like 30 years ago and then uh the very start yeah so about uh 10 years ago we met in the poker room like hey how you doing don steve hey what's going on so uh yeah that's how that that all that all came about and stuff awesome and and what is uh what would you say is is there any can you give a tax a trick for people uh, or something that they might not know about to save some money or something that's coming like, you know, to the, the thing about, I say about taxes are you, you, you want to be, uh, I send out a newsletter every, every month and, and you know, it's, it's good to, to read it. It's um, but 
you know, most people just gather their stuff up and they meet with their tax guy. I said, you know, your tax guy should be experienced, not just in taxes, but you, you, you got to ask good questions. And most people don't ask good questions. So I just give them the information anyway. It's like, you know, and, and like I said, I'm a very good problem solver. So, you know, people come in my office, not about taxes, about those other things in life, you know, those splashing in the mud puddles, you know, building up a retirement plan, things like that. Uh, you know, I had, I had a girl come in the office the other day and she's, wow, she was amazing. She's 24 years old. She's an esthetician. She started as esthetician six months ago. And I remember she called me and I, and, I, and I was talking to her and stuff. And I said, what kind of business are you in? And she said, well, I'm an esthetician. I was like, no, you're not an esthetician. When you're in business for yourself, Jeff, what kind of business are you in? Entertainment. You're in the marketing business. Yeah. Everyone who has a business is in the marketing business. Everyone who has a job is in the marketing business. Because at a job, you get a review every year, right? It's like, hey, how much more money am I going to get? So you have to market yourself to your boss and your company to move up the chain. Same business. If you got a great podcast, got a lot of followers, you know, even if your podcast was horrible, if you had a lot of followers, you got to get people clicks. You got to get clicks. It's about marketing. And that's what I teach people in business. You know, you got you to be the best marketer and don't think you know everything. Be a good marketer and look at other opportunities and figure out how to get people in, you know, uh, you, you know, things like that. You know, you'll you'll send this out to your list and you might even send this this podcast out to another the same list, you know, two months from now, you know, uh, uh, but it's, it's about marketing and you're right. always marketing. Be the best marketer. And you're everyone's a salesperson, even the kids. Daddy, why can't we have two scoops of ice cream? Well, because you had licorice earlier, so one scoop this time. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> life's an enrollment, that. it's an enrollment game too, right? You're enrolling people into your vision and what you're whatever. So, I mean, that's how I I would I would agree with that statement completely. And life, life's short. Life is short. You always hear that play, like Tony Robbins said, play full out. Give it a hundred percent. You're going to work. You know, uh, my thoughts was always like, if you're going to work, you want to make the most money you can. If you're going to sit there, you know, and, and play poker, do the best you can. Focus always on the best you can and, you know, and learn the game. Learn the game more. Ask people, read books. Go back to old books. Go back to Doyle's book and read it because there might be a little thing there that you're just missing in your game that will make it click. Yeah, I'd agree with that full heartedly. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Well, Steve, I think uh, we have covered a lot. It's, a, again, the very interesting journey. You Again, it's pretty impressive. You know, you got almost 5 million caches. Granted, one was a big one, but you have some other consistent caches over the years. You don't play a lot of poker the last five years. You know, you sprinkle in there a little bit. You come in, make a good run. The Borgata seems to be good for you. Give me, give me a couple uh, last thing here. Couple of places you enjoy playing the most, and a couple of maybe trips in general. Places you. I like. Uh, I like. Um. I like the Borgata. I like. I like going to the Borgata. It's two and a half hour drive. I know the people there. It's you know, you know the atmosphere. Um, uh, I, I. I don't. I Venetian. I like the Venetian. I've never won anything at the Venetian, but I like the poker room. I like the smell of the Venetian. I never win anything at the Venetian though. Um, and the, uh, uh, that, that's, that's basically all the rest are about average or so. Have you been to the hard rock, the new hard rock or, uh, Montreal uh, program? Yeah. Uh, the, been to the hard rock in Florida. You know what? I like playing Atlantis that, that, uh, that tournament down Atlantis, they don't have it anymore, but that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I go down there and play two tournaments in a seven day period. That was enough for me. I'll tell you what, uh, you should put this on your radar is Baja Mar. Have you heard about that? The new one? I've heard about it. Yeah, I've heard yeah. about it. Yep. So that's November. So hopefully next November will be back since this one they didn't have it. But that's, that's okay. Poker. Awesome. Yeah. It's very, very nice. Well, you, you were there. Yeah, you. I saw you there a couple of times in Atlanta. It's, it was fun. It's fun. Yeah, there. that was, I mean, that was the main destination for, you know, 15 years. That was yeah. uh, going on. That was, a, and that's an easy one too. That's not, not far. Well, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really do appreciate it. This has been a long time. We've been talking about doing a podcast. So we did. Yeah. And, and I do have a giveaway, so I want you to tell me when we're gonna. This is the 111th podcast on the Flow Show, and we got Mr. Dan, and of course, 111. That's just what he does. He hits good, you know. He just does <laughs> get things done. He's lucky. He's running hot. We're gonna give someone a chance for this uh, this 111 ticket. So I'm gonna go put it here 
We're going to plug it in, and then I'm going to let you tell me when. This is a cool little tool uh, right here. So you do a, do a retweet giveaway. We're going to run right. it like this, create a contest, I am sure, and we're going to download the retweets and see who's eligible. Steve, are you comfortable with that? You're going to tell me when. We're going to click a button, and someone's going to win a ticket, okay? So just say when, when. You just tell me when. Uh, so 117 eligible entries. I'm going to choose a winner. Yeah, you tell me when. When? Boom, boom. I'm sure we're running it right here. Let's see who gets it, Steve. So 111 could turn it into a lot. There it is, Nemesis. We're going to send him a message. Look at this. He's got he's who got was? waters there. This guy looks like he could he could win a lucky ticket. And oh, man, I don't want to play against that guy. Not he a bit. Up. He's <laughs> already won something before it looks like. So uh, we'll give him that ticket. Steve, I'll see you. I, I, what, well, um, last question about taxes. The year is yeah. coming to an end. You as a C, as an account, what would it, is, does it make sense? Because I find my issue, I'm fairly organized, but then right. I'll wait and then it comes to be April and I'm scrambling. Right now I have all the info for the year, basically. Once the year ends, I could get it all prepared and organized. Uh, is that like a thing you'd recommend? Do most people do that? You see people wait. Yeah, I would say, you know, I, I organize my stuff at the in January and then I go through it. And then what I do is I enter my stuff in the computer and and then I, I take another two looks over at it. So it's good to like get your stuff to your accountants early, follow up in two weeks what you need, because sometimes it just sits on the desk at someone's place. And right. then uh, and then you know, just uh I I, I think reading uh things online. I think reading things online about taxes and stuff and, and, and getting educated because then you can bring that to the table with other people, uh, to, to your accountant and say, Hey, you know, I read about this and this, what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, and you know, Google's powerful. Do I recommend doing your own taxes? Probably not because unless it's, even if it's a straightforward thing, but you have to have an accountant or CPA who, um, is knowledgeable in a lot of areas instead of just plopping the numbers down. They're going to ask you these extra questions. They want to know you. I, I want to know the client. I want to get to know him. I want to know I want about his life, his lifestyle, and things like that, because then I can ask questions. But if you do your taxes yourself through the years, and all of a sudden one year uh, you, you've got something tricky going on or someone passed away and you don't know who to go for for guidance, now you've got to establish a relationship with someone that you don't know whether it's good or not with good advice. At least if you've gone to some schmuck over the years and you've built up some rapport and you kind of kind of figure out whether you like them or not, you know. So it's it's about trust building trust though, and and um, uh, and just just remember, you know, you're you're a marketing person, you know, in life, you're a salesperson, you're a marketing person. The whole idea is make more work less, and and you got to tell yourself that. You got to tell yourself that. How can I make more and work less? Because then you'll have more time to play poker and everything else. That's great advice. It's really, it really is. And and I think that's uh, that's ultimately that's the dream. And that's what we're trying to do is optimize optimize that time is very valuable. And and I uh, I agree with pretty much everything you say, Steve. You got a good head on your shoulders. I appreciate it. And uh, I guess hopefully we'll be playing some live poker soon. You know, sounds you good. A few drinks. It's been a it's been a Thanks while. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, yeah. Everybody have a great new year. Happy holiday and stay safe and let's get through this, right? Let's get through it. New year coming up soon, man. I uh, appreciate it, Steve. We'll be in touch soon as well for some taxes and, and some poker. So I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much, guys. That's Steve Thanks. Daneman, the second place finisher, 2005 WSOP runner up, but much more than that. Uh, very, very uh, sharp guy, a friend of mine for a long time, and also has done my taxes for, I don't know, probably a decade now. It's been a while. So um, we, we know sure. each other really well. Steve knows right, me. Yeah, thank you. Steve All really right. knows me. So cheers, Steve. Have See you, buddy. Day. Steve Danneman, guys. We'll see Audley Harrison tomorrow, number 112, the Olympic gold medalist, heavyweight champion. Uh, it's going to be a fun one as well. Play some poker. So tune in for that. That's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you guys there.